The news at noon starts right now. Murder will be the charge that a northeast side man is facing in connection with a beating that turned deadly. He's accused of punching another man, causing injuries that led to his death. Katrina Weber reports investigators believe that this fight centered around the disciplining of a child. In his mugshot, 31-year-old Jeremy Baihe looks anything but happy, and it's with good reason. He is facing a murder charge in a case that San Antonio police believe grew out of rage. A beating late last month at an apartment in the 1300 block of Perennial Drive. Police spelled it all out in an arrest affidavit, saying Baihe attacked 36-year-old Michael Adan for disciplining Baihe's underage son. The affidavit says Adan had stepped in to stop that child from assaulting his own mother. Then it says Baihi showed up at Adan's apartment later and attacked him, hitting him repeatedly until he was unconscious. After Adan came to, Baihi allegedly attacked him again outside. The affidavit says that Maihi continued beating Adan after he was unconscious on the stairs. And investigators believe that's when he suffered the head injury that eventually led to his death. Adan had spent several days in the hospital where his condition worsened until he died. Police got the murder warrant and arrested Baihi yesterday, the same day as Adan's funeral. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A woman in the hospital after her bike ride went very wrong. It happened around midnight on Susanwood Drive on the city's east side near East Houston Street in Loop 410. The woman in her 40s hit by a car. She was taken to the hospital with a possible broken ankle. Officers tell us the driver who hit her briefly stopped but then took off. Police are now looking for that driver. Now, crime on the north side, it's the topic of a town hall meeting happening tonight. Taking part, District 8 Councilman Manny Pelais, District 9 Councilman John Courage, and Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez, and San Antonio Police Chief William McManus. Neighbors are invited to learn more about crime on San Antonio's north side, the response from local leaders, and what neighbors can do to keep themselves safe. This starts at 6.30 tonight at Congregation Agudas Akim. That's on Hebner Road near Bitters Road. Attendees will have the chance to ask questions. A major ruling from the Supreme Court today. It could have a wide impact. The court striking down a New York gun law. The justice's decision expected to allow more people to legally carry guns on the streets of New York the nation's largest cities, including New York, Los Angeles, and Boston as well. ABC's Faith Abube has more. The U.S. Supreme Court Thursday striking down New York century old restriction on concealed firearms. Six out of the nine justices siding with gun rights advocates in New York that the state's proper cause requirement to obtain a concealed carry license violates the Constitution. A group of New York gun owners asked the Supreme Court to establish a fundamental right to carry a handgun for self-defense outside the home. The gun rights advocates challenged a century-old New York statute that requires applicants for concealed carry permits to show proper cause or a specific special need for possessing a firearm in public places. The New York State Rifle and Pistol Association and two individual gun owners call the standard so high that it violates the Second Amendment. Some of the conservative justices were worried that local officials have too much discretion. Why isn't it good enough to say I live in a violent area and um, I want to be able to defend myself? But New York State maintained that gun rights are not unlimited and that reasonable barriers to concealed carry are necessary for public safety. The state arguing that striking down the law would lead to more guns on the streets. They multiply the number of uh, um, firearms that are being carried in very densely populated pr places and there is a much higher risk. 29 states require concealed carry permits, eight of those including New York, giving authorities discretion to deny permits to anyone who cannot show a special need. In the months after the high court heard the case, there have been two high-profile mass shootings in New York, one in a subway car in Brooklyn, and another apparently racially motivated attack at a Buffalo supermarket, killing 10 black Americans. And the reaction from New York Governor Kathy Hochul this afternoon is that this Supreme Court decision, quote, is sending us backwards in our efforts to protect families and prevent gun violence. At the Supreme Court, Faith Abube, ABC News.
And state lawmakers are continuing to discuss gun violence. Committees coming together for a joint hearing taking place right now. Heard statements from victims and loved ones. That includes Jasmine Casares, the sister of Uvalde shooting victim Jacqueline Casares. Now, the superintendent says he was holding off on personal decisions. He says he changed his mind, given the, quote, unknown timing on investigation results. We want to move now to what is happening in Uvalde itself. State lawmakers, uh, rather Pete Arredondo, is now on administrative leave with the Uvalde CISD, although they are not saying whether he is being paid while off the job. He should never be allowed to work in law enforcement again, I, uh, my personal opinion. Bravo. It's about time. It's about time. It's been almost a month. That's Uvalde resident Kimberly Hammond. She also called for Arredondo's removal from City Hall uh, earlier this week from the City Council. So if he misses two or more consecutive meetings, the council could vote to remove him. And coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we sit down with a fourth grade student who is going to the Resiliency Center in Uvalde. She talks about the day that changed her life forever and shares how she is making sure the victims are not forgotten. Listen to the story of 10-year-old Aurelia Santos tonight at 10. Uvalde Together Resilience Center now vowing to stay open for the next five years. The center offers personal and victim services for adults and children. There are nine private pods for one-on-one -on -one counseling and three larger spaces for families. The center is run primarily by the Ecumenical Center and the Uvalde District Attorney's Office, which is working on a more permanent space for long-term care. We have more information, including the hours and phone numbers, on ksat.com. And happening right now, more than 1,000 Texas McDonald's restaurants are going to be taking part in a fundraiser to help support the Uvalde community. Until 2 p.m., 10% of sales at McDonald's will be donated to the Rob School Memorial Fund and the Ronald McDonald House Charities in San Antonio. You can take part. All you have to do is order lunch for dine-in or carry-out at the drive through or delivery on the McDonald's app. And the 2022 NBA draft is tonight, and there's plenty at stake for the Spurs. Andrew Seeley has a preview of the event coming up later in sports. Some Bear County families are being forced to make some tough financial decisions every day. What people in the community are doing to help people to improve their economic stability. A new online tool is letting people experience some of the difficult choices local families must make due to financial hardship. The United Way of San Antonio and Bear County launching an online budget simulator and they're hoping it'll encourage employers to commit to meaningful change related wages. Tiffany Huertas has details on this tool and how one local organization is helping people gain training to advance in different careers. It's critical for employers to look and see what are my staff and my, my, my employees uh, making the tough choices they're having to do. This new online tool lets users make those difficult financial choices that Bear County residents are making today. 644,000 households here in Bear County, 17% of those households are living below the federal poverty level. In addition to that, there's 35%, so you're talking about 150,000 households that are living above the, the federal poverty level, but not making enough to make ends meet. United Way of San Antonio research found that more than half of Bear County residents are making very difficult decisions every day from transportation, housing and child care. Local organizations like Goodwill San Antonio offers programs to help people looking to improve their economic stability. We are here at the Good Careers Academy that provide vocational skills training to prepare individuals for in-demand occupation. Angelique de Oliveira with Goodwill believes this new tool is critical for the community to understand what their neighbors are dealing with. Many of our clients are Alice. They may be in and out of employment, or they may be in jobs that provide, 
provide insufficient hours or um, no access to affordable benefits, um, as well as limited earnings, which doesn't allow them to support, support themselves. Angelique says it's time to take action. Um, as employers, uh, we have a, a huge opportunity um, to look at how hiring practices and how we are more inclusive of all abilities and background, and to invest in critical upskill program. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's look outside with live cam. Uh, no clouds. And now at 93, we made it. Uh, well, Gosh. you know, do we want to make it to 93, <laughs> I'll at, take 93. Uh, at 12, 12 in the <laughs> afternoon? Uh, you know, the lack of clouds is likely going to make uh, a difference today when it comes to the temperatures. Yesterday, we had those puffy cumulus clouds and we got up to 98. I think today, with less cloud cover out there, we should be able to jump above 100 degrees as we get into later this afternoon. It will stay hot through the weekend, but I do have some good news in the forecast. We're feeling better about a change in our weather pattern for next week, and I'll tell you more coming up very shortly. Today, the aquifer down half a foot, and in your pollen count, just molds reported today low with a count of 260 more on a welcome change in our weather pattern coming up in just a few. What's your plans for the weekend? Plans for the weekend is work and then also be poolside, which mm. I think it's going to be the perfect weekend to do so. Should, can we start early? Can we, can we start <laughs> on Thursday? I wish. I'd be right there. I'd be right there with you. Um, <laughs> now, just know if you're planning your weekend, pool is going to be a good place to be because it is still going to be very hot through the weekend. It's not until Monday that we'll start to see a change, and I think you're going to like it. We'll talk more about it. Uh, let's talk about this month, how hot it's been. This heat, I am just calling it relentless. Uh, every single day so far this month, our high temperature has been above average. Not only that, we've also had a slew of record temperatures and a slew of triple digits. In fact, so far this month, we have had 13 100 degree days. And if the month stopped today, this would already be the June with the most 100 degree days on record. Here's kind of the same info, just a different way to look at it. So 2022 this month, now officially the June with the most 100 degree days. Previously, June of 2009 uh, held the record with 12 triple digit days. And keep in mind, we've still got more than a week to go. And we'll add more triple digits to the board over the next several days today, tomorrow and through the weekend. Our high temperatures are expected to stay in triple digit territory. But look what happens early next week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, 90s, even upper 80s on Tuesday. That's because of a weather pattern change that will bring us chances of rain to help get those temperatures down a little bit closer to where they should be this time of year. In fact, 93 right now, if we stopped right there for the rest of the day, that's where our average high temperature is this time of year. Unfortunately, uh, this number will keep climbing through the afternoon. South winds are light. Thankfully, humidity is down around 34%, so it doesn't feel too much harder than the actual air temperature. A little bit of good news for you there. It's also 93 Gonzales, 94 in Pleasanton, 91 up in Fredericksburg, and 94 in Del Rio. There's not going to be much of a breeze today, unfortunately. By this evening, closer to sunset, winds will pick up just a little bit, but during the hottest part of the day, not much wind to help us out. Calm winds now in Gonzales. Elsewhere, southeasterly winds just about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Skies have been completely clear today. We do have a few puffy fair weather clouds north of Fredericksburg and Blanco starting to bubble up. Up there also a few fair weather clouds closer down to the Gulf Coast. Otherwise, really quiet across Texas, a bit more fair, uh, uh, fair clouds starting to pop up across North Texas. There very hot elsewhere across the state, already up to 99 Wichita Falls, 96 Texarkana, 95 in Tyler, 97 in Waco. So the heat high, yep, it's still there and it's going to have a good grip on our weather over the next several days. All the way through the weekend, high temperatures stay in the triple digits, but by early next week, the heat high or this ridge of high pressure is going to be suppressed. Basically, it's going to weaken and loosen its grip on not only our weather here in South Central Texas, but also elsewhere across the state and really across a good portion of the southern U.S. This is going to make room for some rain making disturbances to pace through 
early next week, starting on Monday with a weak frontal boundary sparking some isolated showers and thunderstorms and then continuing into Tuesday. A disturbance moving over South Texas expected to bring scattered rain for us and even some isolated rain chances lingering in to Wednesday. So I'll go ahead and tell you this is not going to be all the rain that we need. Certainly we would not get that in the span of three days. Uh, but over the next week, here's what we're looking at as far as rainfall potential goes. Widespread around or less than a quarter of an inch. I know that doesn't get you too excited, but at least it's a little something. There will be isolated totals a little higher than that. Uh, generally areas north of Highway 90 could see maybe between a quarter to a half inch of rain. And as of right now, it looks like north up into parts of the hill country and closer to the Austin area. That's where there could be some spotty totals closer to a half inch of rain. So again, it's not going to be all we need. But with those rain chances over a few days next week, that'll help to bring our temperatures down and we'll get at least some brief relief from this relentless heat. Today will be very hot, 99 at 3 o'clock, up to about 101 this afternoon. A lot of sunshine, maybe a few of those puffy little clouds popping up. And I'm leaving in for a few hours later today a mention of a stray shower really wouldn't count on it. The chance really isn't even as good as it was the last couple of days, uh, but I'll leave in a mention there. One or two yards could get lucky this afternoon. 97 at 7 o'clock, 92 at 9 p.m. And the heat will continue over the next few days through the weekend. So Jonathan, you will want to find yourself a spot by the pool. Um, pool weather, not as good early next week, but that is Good news. Definitely. That's where I will be. Ball cap, sunglasses, and a good layer of SPF. You Thank go. you. There Please go. have lots of water, too. Well, Andrew, I am so happy that you're here. I know there's a lot happening in the world of sports and especially uh, the NBA draft. So, yeah, the NBA draft is tonight. Uh, it's kind of a big night for the Spurs. They've got four draft picks, three in the first round. And there are also some rumors about DeJounte Murray's future with the team. When we come back, we'll recap some pretty intense negotiations yesterday. Plus, there's a, a, some a controversy with Roger Goodell and Daniel Snyder. Got that, too. Next. The 2022 NBA draft is tonight in Brooklyn with four picks, three in the first round. The Spurs have a golden opportunity to continue rebuilding the roster towards a championship contender once again. The main question is whether or not that path will include star point guard DeJounte Murray. Reports broke last night that the Spurs were in fact listening to trade offers for Murray and wanted a quote, Drew Holiday-like package for him, close quote, which means somewhere in the neighborhood of three first round draft picks. Murray seemed to be surprised by the new hims news himself, tweeting out, uh-oh, with a popcorn emoji. Now the trade seems unlikely to happen, but as the rumor mill continues to swirl, the Spurs know how important this draft is. Does general manager Brian Wright feel like the draft is deep enough to find some day one starters? Every draft is different. Every situation is different. Um, the team makeup, where you may have opportunity, where you, where you may not. Um, you know, so, so there are things that play into that. That said, we do feel good about the quality of this draft, not just to pick nine, but throughout. Um, and you hope so when you have as many picks as we do. You hope you feel good about the quality of this draft. But we do think we can get players that can help. Um, and as to whether they're a day one starter or not, I think a lot, a lot of that will depend on them um, and the work that they're willing to come in and do and, and just the situation. I think sometimes it breaks that way, sometimes it doesn't. But we're always going into the draft trying to find the best possible prospect um, for the long term of the organization. And if they play right away, that's great. All right, so here's a look at the Spurs picks. They'll pick 9th, 20th, and 25th in the first round, and they also have a second round pick, the first time they've had more than three picks since 1988. It all gets started tonight at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn at 7 p.m. You can watch live right here on KSAT 12, and KSAT 12's Larry Ramirez will be there on the floor. He'll have more tonight on the festivities at 5, 6, and 10. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. After refusing to testify voluntarily before the U.S. House Oversight Committee investigating the toxic workplace environment of the Washington Commanders, the chairwoman of that committee says she will subpoena owner Daniel Snyder. The committee released a 29-page memo yesterday that claims Snyder conducted a shadow investigation into the allegations and worked with the NFL to bury the findings of the official investigation. During NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell's testimony, he was asked if he will remove Snyder as the owner of the team. 
I never said that we were going to stop. I actually said the opposite. We will continue. You have recommend that Diane Snyder be removed as a team owner. Okay, the, you the, the, can recommend the gentle that lady's Snyder time has expired. Owner. The gentleman may answer her question. Remove him. Will you remove him? I don't have the authority to remove him. Now, Goodell does not have the authority to outright remove Snyder, but he could recommend a vote from the other owners. 24 of the 32 team owners would have to vote to remove Snyder. Game four of the Stanley Cup final was decided in overtime last night, and Nazem Kadri came back from injury to score the game winner in a dramatic 3-2 victory over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, there is some controversy because it appeared that six Avalanche players were on the ice for the goal, which might have resulted in a penalty. It was not called, and that call was not reviewable anyway. So now the Avs lead the series three games to one, and the cup will be in the building on Friday night. Just looking at that goal right there, a reminder that hockey is a game of inches. It could very well be 3-1 Tampa, depending on how the series is shaken out. Man, and you reminded me of the fact that I haven't been to a hockey game in such a long Too time. Too long. We missed the rampage. But they've been away oh. for a couple years now. So. It'd be yeah, nice to have them back. We do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. President Biden wants Congress to impose a three-month gas tax holiday to help people save a few bucks. However, governors in some states are worried why they say the move would take money from crucial infrastructure programs. This afternoon, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection says that it will bring to light former President Trump's attempts to push Department of Justice officials into furthering his efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Now, this comes as the committee is postponing the remaining hearings this month after additional evidence relevant to its investigation that has emerged. There is a hearing, however, this afternoon that will go on as planned. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Capitol Hill. In the lead up to the deadly Capitol attack, the January 6th committee alleges former President Trump, along with members of his inner circle, were mounting a multi-level pressure campaign to overturn his election loss. We will hear on Thursday that Donald Trump was also the driving force behind the effort to corrupt the Justice Department. On today's witness list, three top-level justice officials who say they were willing to resign their positions instead of going along with Trump's plan. With those accounts and his own evidence, the committee plans to detail allegations, including Trump pressuring the Justice Department to publicly discredit election results and how justice officials resisted his attempts to appoint a special counsel to investigate his unproven election claims. The American people in our hearings have heard from Bill Barr, Jeff Rosen, Richard Donahue, and many others who stood up and did what is right. Today's hearing comes amid word the probe into January 6th is expanding. Ultimately, fake electors did meet on December 14th, 2020 in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Mexico, Nevada, and Wisconsin. ABC News has learned the Justice Department has sent new subpoenas to people from several states, including some alleged to have posed as fake electors to back Trump over Joe Biden as Congress counted electoral votes on January 6th. More on that growing investigation. The January 6th chairman says those two remaining hearings for June are now postponed until mid-July, giving the panel time to review hours of documentary video from a crew that was following former President Trump and members of his inner circle. Justin Finch, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And we are going to be bring you, bringing you the coverage of this afternoon's proceedings. It'll happen during an ABC special report scheduled for today at 2 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. A daring rescue operation in the middle of war zone, an American nuclear scientist living in Ukraine says he went into hiding after Russia invaded the country. John Spohr was rescued just outside of Mariupol. The team was led by American nonprofit group, Project Dynamo working with Ukrainian security. Spohr says that Russian-backed Chechen fighters ransacked his home. Project Dynamo says Spohr was considered a high-value target because of the sensitive nature of his work, particularly in laser-guided weapon systems. They were hunting me. They wanted to find me. And they wanted to get the information that I have in my head. Now, Spohr has now been reunited with his family and will head back to the United States here soon.
Meanwhile, Ukraine is a step closer to becoming part of the European Union. The European Parliament has adopted a resolution calling on EU leaders to approve Ukraine's status as an EU candidate country. In the resolution, members of the European Parliament said granting candidate status would allow the EU to better support Ukraine. In Japan, the governor of Okinawa said they will continue to offer humanitarian support for Ukraine, including accepting evacuees from the country. The remark was made at the commemoration ceremony for the end of the Battle of Okinawa, Japan, marked the 77th anniversary of the Battle of Okinawa, one of the bloodiest battles of World War II fought on the southern Japanese island. During this battle, around 200,000 were killed, nearly half of them Okinawan residents. Afghan officials are saying more than 1,000 people have died from an earthquake that hit that country yesterday. The number, though, expected to rise as the recovery efforts there progress. The epicenter of the 5.9 magnitude quake was near the country's border with Pakistan. The Afghan government already setting aside emergency funds to help those affected, but the U.N. says $15 million in aid is needed to help with rescues and long-term recovery. This is going to be a long-term effort. It's one thing to bring water and first aid and tents um, and food into an area. It's another thing to rebuild homes and rebuild communities and give people back their livelihoods. There's some bad weather there, though, and it's hampering the rescue and recovery efforts. The U.N. Humanitarian Affairs Office says strong winds and monsoon rains are making it difficult for helicopters to even land with the supplies. Now taking a look outside with live cam, things are starting to heat up. We see 94 degrees right now. Uh, yes, it's already getting plenty hot out there, that is for sure. And you know, the last several days we've had those clouds around to provide at least a little bit of brief shade. Not really the case today. A few of those little puffy clouds could pop up in the next several hours, but bottom line, it is going to be hot. Let's check out your temperatures and heat index readings across the area at the airport. Looks like our heat index is reading 94 right now. That's what it feels like when you factor in the humidity and our heat index numbers are not going to be a lot higher than our actual air temperatures this afternoon, but I expect a lot of us to top out near 100 degrees, so it will certainly feel hot enough. Not much of a breeze in the cards today. Calm winds now from Comfort down to Bulverde, also calm at Randolph and down in Pleasanton. So there really won't be much of a breeze as we get into the hottest part of the day today. So the pool, a good place to be as we get closer to 3 p.m., 99 degrees, sunny skies. Again, a few of those little puffy fair weather clouds uh, certainly possible out there this afternoon, but heat, the big story, 101, your high temperature today. I think it looks a little bit hazy out there today. We did have a little plume of Saharan dust move in late yesterday, so we've got some of that around today. We'll talk more about the outlook for the Saharan dust heading into the weekend. Coming up here in just a few, I'll also give you an update on what's going on out in the tropics in the Atlantic Basin. And we'll also talk a little bit more about what you really want to hear about next week's rain chance, guys. And now to President Biden calling for a national gas tax holiday, well, to bring consumers some relief from sky high prices at the pump. But the president facing some major hurdles in Congress, which would have to approve the measure. ABC Cecilia Vega has the latest. Today, White House officials and oil executives sitting down for a face to face meeting as the president accuses gas companies of profiting off Americans paying at the pump. There's no time now for profiteering. It's the administration's latest attempt to find a way to bring down sky high prices as the national average reaches a near record at almost five dollars a gallon. President Biden also calling on Congress to suspend the federal gas tax, another way he hopes drivers might get a much needed break. I fully understand that a gas tax holiday alone is not going to fix the problem, but it will provide families some immediate relief. He wants Congress to impose a three-month gas tax holiday, suspending the 18-cent tax for gasoline and the 24-cent tax for diesel, potentially saving minivan drivers $3.68 a week, $2.21 for those with a compact car. And with the record 42 million Americans expected to hit the road for the 4th of July weekend, the help can't come soon enough. The prices 
of the gas, you can go anywhere. It feels like all the extra money, the little bit that I had, is not going towards gas. But lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are already opposed. Many Republicans dismiss it as a gimmick ahead of the midterms. And even some Democrats are skeptical. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi concerned oil companies more than consumers could benefit. And many economists agree. Senator Mark Warner saying he's hesitant. It's easy to take away a tax. It's hard to put one back on. President Biden is now also calling on states to suspend their own gas taxes. But Democratic governors from New Jersey to Colorado to Washington are already pushing back, with some saying the move would take money from crucial infrastructure programs. San Antonio FC has been battle tested on the road this season, but tomorrow they face their toughest test. Andrew Sealing has a preview of their showdown with Colorado Springs coming up later in sports. Looking outside with live cam, what would you rather? Beautiful day like today or it 89 degrees with a 30% <laughs> chance of rain? I think I'm going to go with the 89 degrees <laughs> with the 30%. At this point in time? At this point. At, yeah, I'll at, take that. I, can, you, yes. can you arrange that? Uh, yes, I think I think I can. Uh, <laughs> give me a few more days. Give us a few more days, and I think uh, I think we can get there. Uh, yeah, at this point, I don't care what the temperature is. As long as the rain chance is involved, we're good, right? Uh, the aquifer down half a foot in the past 24 hours. It really needs some help, and we're going to try to get that going early next week. Molds are low today with a count of 260. More on those rain chances and the Saharan dust coming up. Got my exercising out of the way early this morning. Good. How bad was the humidity? It really wasn't as bad this morning. I know that seems Something hard <laughs> hard to believe. I, I mean, I'm doubting this. It was still, I mean, you still kind of felt it, but our dew points were down a few degrees, and that, that can make a difference. But for all intents and purposes, yeah, it was a warm and muggy start to the day. We're looking at another hot one, you guys. No big surprise here. 101 this afternoon, 95 by 8 o'clock before the sun goes down, and even at 10 o'clock, uh, 90 degrees. A little bit of breeze will kick in uh, really this evening. So here's a time lapse starting at 730 this morning. Uh, clear skies today. The past few days we've had some of those puffy fair weather clouds. They'll be a bit harder to come by today. And I wanted to show you this because it does appear uh, that when you look at the horizon, it's just a little bit hazy. And that's not terribly surprising because we did have a lighter plume of Saharan dust move in late in the day yesterday. You can see that here um, on our Saharan dust product. It'll continue to kind of filter through today, but by tomorrow a lot of it should thin out. And we also don't expect any Saharan dust to be um, out in our skies as we head through the weekend. So you may notice things looking a little bit hazy today, especially when you take the big flyovers around town and you get a good view of the horizon or um, or the downtown skyline. But again, we expect this plume that has moved in to really thin out by tomorrow. No issues this weekend and then maybe a some very light concentrations of Saharan dust as we get into next week. I also promised you a check of what's going on in the tropics out in the Atlantic Basin. Things have been very quiet. There is one disturbance that the National Hurricane Center will monitor over the next several days. This is a tropical wave, so it's not anything that has organized, has an area of low pressure or anything like that. It's just a disorganized area of showers and storms. It's way off near the coast of Africa, and the National Hurricane Center thinks this only has about a 20% chance over the next five days of becoming anything more organized right now. No worries about this affecting the U.S. coastline. Just wanted to give you an update on what's going on out in the tropics. Our rain chances that kick in early next week have nothing to do with the tropics or that disturbance out in the Atlantic. Rather, they will come to us via a weather pattern change. The heat high, you've heard a lot about this really over the last month, even more than that, because it's had an early grip um, on our weather. Typically, we see this pattern a lot during the summertime, but it uh, started to have a good grip on our weather even in late spring, and that's why we had our hottest May on record. June uh, is looking like it's going to kind of pan out the same way, and the heat high will be with us for the next several days. But as we get into early next week, beyond the weekend, this heat high will become suppressed. It kind of loses its grip over our weather. And these areas of red and orange that you see here kind of around the heat high, those are pieces of rain making energy. That's lift in the atmosphere. We need that and moisture to help us out with rain chances, and we'll have some of these 
disturbances starting to pace through early next week as the heat high kind of falls apart and loosens its grip on our weather. So that's the change that we're monitoring for early next week that will bring us some much needed chances of showers and thunderstorms. Now, as far as specific timing with those rain chances, give us a couple more days, but it looks like by Monday, especially by Monday afternoon and evening, we'll start to have some rain around and that should continue into Tuesday and then taper off by Wednesday. So not constant rain those days, but periods of rain possible. And that is some good news. Currently 93 at the airport, 93 New Braunfels, 94 up in Austin. It's 90 at Bernie stage and 92 at Stinson. Here's how things play out for you this afternoon. A lot of sunshine and triple digit heat for pretty much all of us. Look for a high around 101 in Converse, 101 Seguin, 99 Bandera and 101 in Hondo. So hang in there a few more days and then things look favorable for not only rain chances, but also a drop in our high temperatures by Monday, guys. That looks great. Thank you so much, Katie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Katie. Well, now our subject matter expert to talk about all things sports. I'm a huge fan of San Antonio FC. I know they have a huge, huge game ahead of them. All right. Top two teams in the Western Conference about to do battle in Colorado. When we come back, we'll talk about San Antonio's FC's huge road match. And they've been road warriors this season, 7-2 and two on the road. They'll see if they can get it done coming up. Plus, the end of a magical run for A&M baseball. Got that too. Next. San Antonio FC hits the road once again for their biggest match of the season to date. A showdown against Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC featuring the top two teams in the Western Conference standings. After a brief stay at Toyota Field, SAFC prepares now for their sixth road game in the last seven USL Championship matchups. But the club hasn't been phased by long distance travel so far. They're 7-2 and two on the road this season with three clean sheets to their name. In fact, since Alan Marcina took over as head coach before the 2020 season, the Alamo City Club boasts a 17-10-6 record on the road. It might be a tough draw, but the team says bring it on. That's part of playing in, in America, right? I think it's the hardest league in the world to, to travel in. Uh, I think that's you know pretty easy to say. And so the last couple months have definitely been more difficult than usual, but you know we're, we're mentality monsters and that's that's kind of our MO. So we just need to keep keep having that strong mentality and you know go in there with a, a no quarter attitude. We know the Colorado's a very good team. Uh, that's the reason they are in first in, in our conference now. Uh, you know how hard it's going to be the game, and we're trying to prepare ourselves like as better as we can to to do a good game over there. All right, so here is the matchup: SAFC versus the Switchbacks in Colorado tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. By all accounts, Jim Schlossnagel's first season as head coach of the Texas A&M baseball team was a huge success. The Aggies advanced to the College World Series for the first time since 2017, but they came up short of the ultimate goal. A&M fell to Oklahoma in the semifinals 5-1. Dylan Rock scored the Aggies' only run of the game on a solo homer in the top of the six. But even with their magical run to Omaha, falling to the Sooners was a bitter pill to swallow. We just tried to keep plugging. Today wasn't our day. You know, it's part of it. I think we've we've hit that lucky button enough times this season, and I guess today it ran out on us. But um, just, yeah, one heck of a run. I wouldn't trade it for anything. There, There's no place I'd rather be. I mean, the fact that it hurts this much, I think, speaks to how much it, it meant to me, Troy, all the guys that came in. You know, we might have only been here one year, but it it's definitely our home. The Aggies finished their season with a 44-20 overall record. Keep your eyes on the Astros. Houston just completed a two-game sweep of the National League leading New York Mets yesterday with a 5-3 victory. Houston outscored the Mets 13-5 in those two games. Next up, the big fish in the American League. The Astros will travel to the Big Apple to take on the Yankees in a four-game road series starting tonight at 6.05 p.m. Right when I landed, it felt like it just... That feeling of being back home, it, it hits like no other, so I'm happy to be here and I'm, I'm more than ready to perform in front of my home crowd. Jesse Bam Rodriguez is back in the Alamo City for a huge fight night on Saturday in the Alamo Dome against Thailand Shrisaket Sorong Visai. Today, Bam and his opponent will hold a press conference at the Hyatt Riverwalk in a matter of moments. We'll have more on the big fight coming up this evening at 6 p.m. It's always great seeing these local boxing talents coming back and showing their talents on the big stage here in the Alamo City. Absolutely. I grew up watching boxing, so I love hearing all about it. Thank you, Andrew. You got Thank it. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to head over to SA Live now. Wait, we're primping? What's going on? <laughs> we're catching nice. them off guard. Uh-oh, hello. 
Uh, hello, you know, I yeah, know. Ladies, sit down. This is why. Because we've got muscles on the show today, right, gentlemen? Okay, chef, come on, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> chef John Tardif is actually teaching us how to cook mussels, a little bit of butter, and some shallots. And what's the trick to picking the perfect mussels over there, chef? Well, the trick to picking the perfect mussel is uh, if you uh, push and squeeze a mussel and it doesn't get back, it's a dead mussel, so we're not using it. You're using just a tight muscle like that. So you want to make okay. sure that it is closed. Exactly. Right? Great French food from yes. Tardif, so. And speaking of muscles, superheroes. Oh. Yes, our Jen Tobias Drosky is going to be at the latest exhibit, which is part of San Antonio Spurs legend Tony Parker's collection. Yep, and speaking of superheroes, who is your favorite superhero? Or I'm super saving Nixon. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. You're so today. Know, Why? What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> Miss Rodeo Texas, you saw her back during the rodeo, but the coronation is coming up tomorrow night, and we are going to be talking with the current Miss Rodeo Texas what it has been like traveling around the state and what the girls are up to right now, the gals, as they prepare for the big night tomorrow night. All right. And of course, Nick Spinks from, of course, Artisan Distillery is here. And I didn't know about this latest Red Bull. It's a Wait, great right. coconut uh, tropical Red Bull. We're going to make a great cocktail with it. Great summer cocktail with it. Wow, I didn't know that. And you've got whiskey and watermelon? Whiskey and watermelon. I didn't They're think those could go together. Mm -hmm. of you're going to find out of all, all you're going to find out all sorts of stuff when we do. Yes. <laughs> and more and more muscles. The French guy coming up no, here. No, give them what they want. Hello, everyone. These are some of your top headlines for Cheddar News. The cost of raw materials for electric vehicles more than doubled during the pandemic, forcing companies like GM and Tesla to raise prices. A new report by Alex Partners says costs are up 144% per vehicle for March 2020, led by materials like cobalt, lithium, and nickel. Those are all used in batteries that power EVs. Meanwhile, testifying before the Senate Banking Committee on Wednesday, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell acknowledged that a recession is possible. He said, quote, it's not our intended outcome, but it's certainly a possibility. His testimony it comes a week after the Fed announced a three-quarters of a point increase, the biggest hike in nearly three decades. And Microsoft is saying that there's been an increase in cyber espionage, that by state-backed Russian hackers against countries supporting Ukraine, like the U.S. and Poland. The tech giant says targets include government agencies, think tanks, and businesses, with about 29% of those attacks achieving success. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Pajato coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. All right, we continue to feel more and more confident about a change in our weather pattern early next week that will give us a chance of rain and also a drop in our high temperatures. We'll continue to monitor trends over the next several days and we may make a few tweaks here and there. So keep checking back, guys. Boy, that looks refreshing. We just have to wait. I know. Wait for it. We don't have to wait for SA Live, though. That's right. We have uh, French food with a Texas twist. Let's see what our friends over at SA Live are getting into. Today on SA Live, get up close with heroes, villains, and other icons from pop culture. Where to find them here in San Antonio. The Miss Rodeo Texas pageant is happening this week. We speak to the current Miss Rodeo Texas about the pageant's event. Plus, it is a chilly, boy, you need these drinks on a day like this, chilly thirsty Thursday at a local craft cocktail lounge and distillery. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, hello and happy Thursday. Well, superheroes and villains have landed right here in town. We're gonna be sharing their whereabouts in just a bit. I know this is this is kind of a, a cool exhibit. Yeah, Jen's down there live. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, our first guest today is Tardif's, a new scratch kitchen in San Antonio making French food with a Texas twist. Yep, and chef and owner Jean Tardif joins us with some recipes that you can enjoy at the restaurant. First of all, good afternoon. So you're going to do the, the little muscle flexing? Another guy? Yes. Yeah, let's do it. We got yeah, muscles on go. the show. <laughs> okay, so we are doing a classic, What? What? how do you describe this or what's the name That's of this? That's a moule marinière. That's a classic uh, Brittany and Normandy dish. With the uh, muscles, okay. With so. the muscles. So, so a little bit of olive oil in here, and you oh. said that kind of helps to keep the butter from burning. So much, exactly. Right? We're okay. gonna heat it up a little bit. Heat it up a little bit, and, and then yeah. some so shallots. So it's just shallots, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Shallot when when those shallots are a little bit uh, translucent, that's where we're gonna 
put our muscles. Okay. And, and if folks missed the information you gave a little earlier, when you're selecting a muscle, you look for certain things, right? Exactly. You, you look like when you close that muscle, if you have a little bit open, if you uh -huh. close it and it doesn't come back, by its own is that it's dead. It's a dead muscle. Okay. So okay. we're looking for these very close muscles. That's perfect for cooking, okay? Okay, so if it's open and, yeah. look, and then you squeeze it, it's like talking to you, you don't want it to do Exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is just butter, and then we just toss the muscles in like that? That's it. And That's just it. Dump them all in there. Yeah. Okay. All in there. And we're going to wait. They're going to open up, and with uh, their own uh, water, mm -hmm. they're going to steam they'll themselves. So once they're open, we're going to throw some salt and pepper. Okay. There just you go. A, we'll just toss a little bit in here right exactly. now. Exactly. And, and you want to throw your uh, parsley there. Okay. Grab All my parsley. It? How much? Half of it. Half, Half of it? Of it. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of parsley. Okay. Oh, and of course. And of then, course. You can't wine. cook French food without some wine. Without right? some wine. <laughs> Always uh, good wine. I've never cooked with a wine that I didn't do or don't drink. Mm -hmm. You have to cook with a good wine. Okay. Muscadet is, Muscade is perfect for the moule marinière. Okay. So and this just goes on top? Those goes on top. Okay. About, about well, how much? Uh, about there. About there? And okay. that's kind of how you go about in the kitchen, right? Uh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Talk I've, folks about, you know, how you go about recipes. <laughs> I've never been into recipes. I always cook with it with my instinct. I try a lot of things. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my uh, team in the kitchen are crazy because I don't actually have a recipe book. So they say, Chef, how much? And you go, that's good. <laughs> Just and that's like it. That. That's good. That's, that's it. it. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's good. good. That's good. Okay. Now we're going to uh, let it open. All right. And when they're open, actually, they're ready. They're cooked. They're already steamed. Okay. That's it. When they're steamed, we're going to add some, a little bit of creme. So creme add, fresh. add a little bit of this in here yeah. right now? Just okay. a little bit, yeah. Okay. And so butter, butter, cream. And that pretty much and sums up yeah. Yeah. French that's food, it. right? That's French food. <laughs> do you have to cover them or anything exactly. when, you, when you do these? Uh, normally, no. With a high heat, it, it will come uh, uh, real oh, they're fast. Starting to open. They're Look starting to open. Yep. Oh, I'll be darned. I, yep. I didn't think it was that quick so when, these, when these things cook. Take so. this to the All max. Right. So some of the, the classic French dishes, and you said the favorite thing is right here, and you're about one of the only ones in town where you can find this, right? Yeah, the beef wellington. Okay. It's uh, an amazing dish. We're a scratch kitchen, so it's a, a work of passion mm -hmm. and love. Uh, I mean, uh, we're, it's a, a tenderloin that is wrapped with mushroom duck cell and Dijon mustard mm -hmm. and wrapped in prosciutto and then uh, cooked in a, a puff pastry. Oh, Look wow. at how And it goes fast, that right? Looks. That's a popular dish. It's a very popular dish. Yeah, we have actually, we have a limited availability because yep. that's our most uh, seller dish in the restaurant. Yes. Okay, a lot of people, I mean, it's French food, um, you know, some think it's a little too heavy, other too light. So this is kind of the classic, very gourmet French stuff. Yeah, right? it's a classic gourmet. It's a fine dining, as we we could say. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of uh, like uh, the, our uh, pate there. It's a rillette. Uh, it's a dark confit rillette with some cornichon. Uh, yeah, but we, we actually put some a little bit of Texas twist on our, uh, on our dishes, like our mousse au chocolat there. We have some bacon bits in, uh, so it's a smoked bacon uh, 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 tossed in there with some pecans. Oh my that, God. It's got bacon in it? That's got bacon, bacon in it, yeah, of course. Send it, send it, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm just going to, yeah. I, I have to taste this. You have <laughs> a little spoon right here. Thank I have you. been dying. I'm going to walk over for that one. God, that was worth the oh wait. Oh, my okay. goodness. And where are you located? Uh, we're located on uh, IH10. It's uh, 23110 IH10. It's on the <laughs> Dominion exit, uh, uh, right before Leon Springs. That okay. is so good. That wow. is so good. Okay, we're having mm -hmm. little campers here with mm -hmm. this. Okay, this duck is just... Oh. Okay. Mm. All right. So... Of course, let's get the information up on the screen. For more on Tardifs, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, where we provided a link, or you just scan that QR code on your screen. Ooh, can't mm -hmm. wait to try the muscles either. Chef, thank you very much. Thank you. No, thank you very Appreciate much for having oh, us here. Gosh, that's good. Mm. Okay, back to these superheroes we were talking yes. about. So, superheroes have been around for, oh gosh, a long time. Who's your favorite superhero? Or super villain? Yes. Let us know Who's at your... SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. I have to say Wonder Woman because she has okay. the coolest accessories. The, you the, know? the rope and the, and yes, the wrist. Even things. her bracelets okay. are like bulletproof. And mine has cool. to be Batman. Because when I was a kid. And the, and the, yeah, and the jet. My <laughs> Batman. Because when I was a kid, I would ride my Aww. bike with the Batman cape on. So yeah. I could see that. I know you. I know you could. I knew you'd like that. So, 
<laughs> Let us know right. who your favorite superhero or villain is. <laughs> yes, send us a live case out on Facebook and Twitter. And speaking yeah. of them, some have landed right here in San Antonio. Yes, our Jen Tobias Trusky, also known as Wonder Woman, is out at the San Antonio Museum of Art checking out their latest exhibit, which is part of San Antonio Spurs legend Tony Parker's collection. It features life-size figures from pop culture. Hey there, Jen. Yes, Wonder Woman, the Hulk, Iron Man, all of the favorites from Spurs legend Tony Parker. I'm excited to get the sneak peek and joining me now is Emily Neff, the Kelso director for the San Antonio Museum of Art. And I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank you for being <laughs> here. It's, it's a great super show for you to be here. Now this is very exciting because Tony Parker essentially lets you borrow all of these. Tell me about this. That's right. Our, our Spurs hero, Tony Parker, yes. <laughs> uh, we learned that he collected these popular culture figures from the Marvel Extended Universe. And we learned about it because our marketing firm, the PM Group, uh -huh. uh, also collects. And they have a kind of friendly competition between one another. And so we learned of it. One thing led to another, to another and here we are in, in the show. Obviously, he's a huge fan, right, of DC and Marvel comics. And behind us, uh, I know he has some favorites. You walk through this with him. You talk to him. Um, and so here, this one has a special story behind it, right? Well, this is this is the Hulk Buster. <laughs> and for those of you who are Iron Man um, fanatics, you'll know that this is Iron Suit number 44. There you go. And it's about 16 and a half to 17 feet tall. So no basketball player is this tall. <laughs> um, even so, and it's it's. It's, it's one of his favorites. He has many favorites, but the, the story behind it is personally meaningful to him because he actually put it together with his family. Wow. And it's his family who got him started in collecting mm -hmm. because they said to him, Tony, you have everything. What can we possibly give you for Christmas or birthdays? Mm -hmm. And um, so they gave him a smaller statue of one of his favorite superhero superheroes. And that led into this so huge this. collection wow. supplemented by loans from the PM group as well. Ah, okay. And all of these that you see in the show are in his basketball court in his private home. And I was gonna say, where does he keep all of these? I know. Like, you got the Black Panther. Well, you would need, <laughs> I know, he's huge as well. And you would need to have a basketball court in your home to accommodate <laughs> exactly. all of these. So it's almost like they become friends yes. for him. Yes, and I noticed there's three Captain Americas. Well, there are three Captain Americas because um, Tony Parker has uh, a couple of favorites, but certainly one of them is Captain America. So that you see two of the film version Captain America's, but you also see on the far side the one that comes actually from the comics. Wow. And comics have been around for a very long time. And then you have the phenomenon of the super popular movies. Yes. And there's a lot going on because this exhibit will be here until September 4th. But you have a few fun events happening in July, right? We have some great events that our wonderful education department has pulled together. One is on July 8th. It's a free movie, and it's Lego Batman. Please come at 830, bring your blankets, sit outside. The one that I'm very excited about is on July 29th, and it is called Choose Your Destiny. And it is an interactive superhero experience. And you travel through the permanent collection discovering the heroes and villains in the collection. And if you answer a riddle incorrectly, kind of like a, a scavenger hunt, um, it may lead to your demise. Oh. So it is fun for people <laughs> of all ages. And then it will end with the Teenage uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, screening fun. again out of doors. And they are here too, by the way. We couldn't give it all away. Wonder Woman's around the corner as well. Uh, again, there's a nice connection though with this exhibit and what else you have here, right? Well, this is one of the things we love about the show is that you learn that these heroes that we all grew up with actually have been around in one form or another in all cultures across time. Yes. So you can go through our collection, you can discover Hercules of his superhuman strength, you can discover Ganesha from India, he's the one with the elephant head, also known for his superhuman strength, but also his um, sense of compassion. Yes. So it gives you a, a chance to explore um, and go around the world. We often say Sama is our passport to the world through art. Beautiful, thank you, Emily. We have more to come. There's another nice piece with a fun, fun backstory. You gotta stick around the second half to learn more about that. And we'll send it back to you, Mike and Fiona. So 
so cool. Right? Oh. And I love how she said, uh -huh. Sama, San Antonio Museum, passport to the world. So if so you haven't been there in a while, go there. Great, it's air conditioned too in the summer. <laughs> For more information on Tony Parker's Heroes and Villains exhibition at the San Antonio Museum of Art, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just scan that QR code on your screen. All right, when SA Live continues by celebrating Pride Month with a delicious treat that's also benefiting the Pride Center of San Antonio. Plus, we chat with Miss Rodeo Texas about the pageant and what it takes to be the Miss Rodeo Texas.